Did you have something, Councillor? Oh. <laughs> Well, I just forgot that we weren't going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. No, we are going to. We are. We will. Yeah, we are going to, yeah, we're going to go ahead with it. <clears throat> the agenda for a, a regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Poplar Bluff, Missouri to be held on Monday, October 5th, 2020 at 7 p.m. In the, in the City Council Chambers at 301 South 5th Street will now come to order. Um, Councilwoman uh, Parsons, would you please introduce your pastor? I would like everyone to stand for our invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. associate pastor and he was recently ordained and very proud of him for that but he also serves as a life coach for the Poplar Bluff High School football team and is a board member on the bread shed and he's got two small children and a wife so he's a very busy fellow so <laughs> thankful he's here yes. let us pray Father we just come to you this evening and we are just thankful for men and women who step up to serve our city and represent our city I pray, Lord, you be with us tonight through this whole entire meeting, God, that you would just give us strength and due diligence for all that is going to be decided and all that's going to be taken care of regarding the city matters and the, of Poplar Bluff. I pray, Lord, you just protect us, keep us all safe. It's in the name of Jesus that we all pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilwoman Parson. Here. Councilman DeGarris. Here. Councilwoman Horton. Here. Councilman Corman. Here. Councilwoman Taylor. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Davis. Here. Mayor Smith. Here. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Clerk Young. Item five, disclosure of interest. Any member of the city council may disclose any possible conflict of interest dealing with either any item on the, print, on the printed agenda or with any matter discussed at a previous meeting. Mr. Mayor, I'll need to excuse myself on workshop item A. Workshop item Hey, so noted. Before I, I, before I go into citizens' input, if you're speaking at the podium, please use the disinfectant wipes to wipe down the mi microphone after your use and dispose of it in the trash receptacle beside it. Each person in the audience may take this opportunity to address the city council on any matter which is not on the printed agenda. Seeing none, workshop items for discussion. Item A. Okay, okay. The city council will discuss the options for live stream broadcast of the city council meetings. Mr. Winters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as we discussed at our last meeting, the city's been asked about live streaming our city council meetings. I would recommend that we begin these meetings um, and broadcast them to YouTube live. Um, we have already have, we already have a presence on YouTube where we post recorded council meetings. This will allow us to broadcast these meetings live and then the recording of the meetings would, would be there after at their conclusion. This would allow anyone with internet access to view the meetings live from the comfort of their home, on a computer, or on a cell phone. Anyone that wanted to share the link to the streaming version or the recorded version to a social media site would be able to do that. I think with, along with the, the city live streaming these, these, these meetings, that uh, as a council you should also consider updating some of our policies 
uh, in regards to the council chambers. Um, the city, city clerk Young and I have looked at other cities and what type of policies or resolutions our city councils have approved. Um, I would like to ask for two more weeks to uh, put some finishing touches on, on some of the research that we've been doing to uh, present a formal policy to you. A few of the examples we've looked at include designating an area within the council chambers for the use of audio video recording devices by others and by the press. Um, no live streaming from within the chambers in part or, or in whole is allowed and the city um, the city's broadcast is available and is preserved there as recording as well. Um, so there are some different different cities are handling it different ways and like I said we've done some research and, and and if it's okay, I'd like a couple more weeks for us to continue to do some research and bring you something a little more formalized at our next meeting. Um, you know, we discussed equipment last time. You know, it would take an investment of about $2,500, $2,500 to $3,000 for new equipment. You know, the, what we're using right now is, is uh, I think, safe to say on its last leg. Um, to replace what we have now, with the same thing would, would be about $5,500 um, for the new camera and the new recorder that we use. Um, so this would definitely be an, a cheaper alternative to that that's gonna provide us what we need um, for now and then moving forward in the future as well. So, um, but I would ask, like I said, for a couple more weeks till the next council meeting to, to continue to work on this for you. Any questions of, of me tonight about this? For clarification, are you asking them to move it to the next workshop or go ahead and move it to the voting session of the next meeting? If you want to move, if you could move it to the next workshop, then we would workshop whatever the new policies that, that Nevada, Ms. Young and I come up with before you vote on it, yes. Okay, I make a motion that we move it to the next workshop. I'll second. October 19th. Yes, okay, okay. Do we have a second? Yes. Second. Chris. Oh, Chris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Shame. Item B. The City Council will consider a recommendation from the Municipal Utilities Advisory Board regarding an amendatory agreement between the, between the City of Poplar Bluff and Southwestern Power Administration. Mr. Bob. Yes, Mayor, members of the Council uh, stated this agreement will amend specifically our power supply contract with uh, Southwestern Power Administration 540. It will change the ownership, maintenance, replacement of equipment in the sub and will provide for replacement of certain switches in the sub. This was discussed at our earlier advisory board meeting and we recommend the approval of the contract change. If you have any questions, be happy to answer. If there are no questions, I'd make a motion to move this to the October 19th voting session. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Item C, the City Council will consider an amendment to the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission State Block Grant for the Airport Improvement Program, project number 20-075A-1. Mr. Winters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, city entered into a grant agreement with the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission in May of 2020 for the design and construction of the runway at the airport. The original agreement was for $149,501 to assist with the design of the new runway. The Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission has now prepared amendment number one to that original agreement that includes the funds for construction. So the total grant funds from both the FAA and the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission total $3,117,730. Um, 
Um, you may recall this project went out for bid earlier this year. Emory Sapp and Son was approved as a low bidder. Uh, the original estimates for the project cost were 4.2 million and then bids came back um, just underneath that original estimate. So that, that's what the amendment is. A motion has to be moved to the voting session October 19th. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item D, the City Council will consider an amendment to the grant agreement between the City of Poplar Bluff and the Missouri Department of Public Safety Office Office of Homeland Security relative to an upgraded 911 system. Mr. Winters. You all probably get tired of listening to me talk, so I'm going to let the much more energetic and charismatic Dave Williams <laughs> come and present this, uh, this to you. Name it. Hello, Mayor and City Council. Um, here tonight to discuss the 911 system for the City of Popper Bluff. And, uh, we've Excuse been me, sir. I don't mean to interrupt, but but for the record, we need your, your, your name and address, please. Oh, I thought that was the introduction, sorry. <laughs> Dave Williams, <laughs> Chief Communication Officer, Proper Love Police Department. Thank you. Back in, well, the good news first is uh, we've been awarded a grant for approximately $125,000 for 911 system. Back in March, uh, I believe Austin Lemons came in, discussed a project that was going to be between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars we went on the high side with 250 to for the city to match a 60 grant 40 for the city that was approved um, so we had some work to do we went ahead and applied for a grant um, that grants very specific on what they will cover and will not cover so you got to stay with me on this right Nevada yes yes <laughs> and this in March we asked to secure a 604911 grant. You approved the 6040 grant for approximately $250,000. The initial bid was $248,000 with some change. Zach Van Fleet with Silicon's back here. The grant right was for $208,000. That's the stuff that the grant will cover the verbiage in the grant. And it was awarded $124,800. That leaves the city about $83,200 to pay. That will change and I'll get to that. So Zach wrote in the co total cost with the move, the tier one support and other items that are not paid for by the grant itself. The grant pays for equipment and the program, the programming and actual the monitors, the computers, computers and things to that effect. So the total bid came in at $222,000. That's still under the 250. The approximate cost of the city is still going to remain the same, maybe just a little bit more because the grant will not cover. We have to have this money spent by December of 21. Of course, in the new police station, we won't, I don't think we will be, let me rephrase that, be in the new police station by December of 21 up and running. So we're going to install this at the comm center we're renting out on three rivers then we'll have to move it out there. This extra cost includes that move, technicians, training, things like that. The grant will pay for one year of training. I think Zach can explain this as far as the five-year plan is what it is for the $222,000. So with that reminder, the current phone system is out of date. It's 13 years old. The company is no longer in business, and we can no longer get replacement parts. So. To say it in layman's terms, we're kind of operating on a prayer here that, uh, that our phone system does not go down because if it goes down, I mean, we're without phones and a 911 system. So I'd like to move this to the voting session, if I could, for the, for the next council meeting. If you have any questions, and Zach's going to come up anyway and kind of tell you what this system is about and what it's going to do and what the other, what is it, $18,000, $14,000 over the 208 will incur. Zach Van Fleet. Good evening. Hey there. Uh, Zach Van Fleet, Solicom Technologies. Mm. Um, first, open to any questions um, from, the, from the council about it. Just to kind of give you a brief synopsis of Solicom. 
Um, we've, we've been in business 21 years. Uh, 911 systems are all that we do. Um, uh, the system that you're getting now actually runs the entire country of Australia. It's, uh, it's very flexible. So our, our typical PSAP public safety answering point that we work with is four to eight positions. That's really our sweet spot, but we run the island of Guam, the country of Australia, the Virgin Islands. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to sell any of those. So, um, but uh, it's, it's extremely flexible. Uh, working with us, you have more of a partner. Um, we're not going to go anywhere. Um, we're part of ComTech, which is a publicly traded $1 billion company. So um, we're extremely stable. And uh, just to kind of answer Dave's questions, yes, in five years, there would be a hardware refresh uh, on the system. Um, so we recommend that all aspects of the hardware, that's, that's the life of this hardware is five years. So in five years, you, you know, we would, we would propose that you guys replace that hardware. So that would be the ongoing additional cost, yearly maintenance and support, obviously. Um, we are providing tier one support. So if you were to have a problem, we would have our personnel um, on site here, depending on the, you know, on the level of issue. Uh, they live in Kansas City, so it takes a while to drive across Missouri, four, four hours, five hours, something like that. Um, we've proposed spares kits and it's a geodiverse system, so you would actually have a redundant backup in two locations in the city, so God forbid, flood, tornado, fire, lightning strike, you know, um, you, you won't lose 911. Uh, so certainly open to, to answer any questions or, or anything if you have hey, for me. Can you tell just a little bit about the Guardian mapping system? The the yeah, so not only is it 911, it's an interactive 911 mapping. So what we're proposing is we are, we actually worked with NINA, which is the National Emergency Number Association. So you remember, I used to see on the side of police cars, it said 911, right? Dial 911 for emergency. And then it said, dial, then you would see E911. Um, so what you're going to start seeing now is NG911, which is next generation 911, which really allows the, uh, the residents to, to be more interactive with the communicators. Um, we're, we're right now the NINA I3 standards, which are the standards for the new NG911 system, are, are being set and developed. Uh, we are proposing text to and from 911, so that will open up that possibility for your, your residents to have text to 911. Um, as soon as Nina comes out and gives us their, their standardized how we can do it, like their method of, of operation, uh, they'll be able to send image files, um, audio recordings, things of that nature to 911. We also fully integrate with Rapid SOS, uh, which will allow um, the dispatchers to see locations on a map. So if somebody does text 911, they're hiding in their closet, they can't talk, uh, we can actually get the GPS coordinates of where that phone is. Um, if there's an accident on a highway, um, they call 911, those GPS coordinates from the phone can be provided to the dispatchers so that we can get first responders on scene much faster. Uh, so it's, it's really, really cool technology. Uh, the Guardian mobile unit, yes, yeah, so one of the things we proposed, Dave is a big fan of, um, is we have a, it's an, it's an emergency operations center and a Pelican box is what essentially from a communication side, um, it would allow you if you were to lose both dispatch centers, you could grab that box. A lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of cities use hotel rooms because they tend to have backup generators and internet connections. And you could take that box and run to a hotel room and plug it in to an internet connection and it will have your laptop, the audio decoder, which talks to our to the 911 equipment and would would basically give you guys the ability to if you were to lose both locations for any reason, uh, you could go anywhere with an internet connection and continue to receive and dispatch 911 calls. Very good. Any questions? Anything? Any okay. questions from the council? I'm glad I didn't sneeze. He seems to make me sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Once you sneeze, everyone looks at you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. Follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rebel. <laughs> this part is. <laughs> Good job.
Thank you. <laughs> I forgot dress socks too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to make a motion to move it to the voting session October 19th. Second. Right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item E. The City Council will consider assigning Chapter 100 bonds and related documents in regard to the Briggs and Stratton purchase. Mr. Winters. I got my breaks and then I get to go again. Um, back in, I think it was February of, of, uh, of this year, the city approved some Chapter 100 bonds as part of a, a, a proposal to keep Briggs and Stratton here in Popper Bluff. Um, as you're aware, Briggs and Stratton filed bankruptcy and they've been purchased by KPS Capital Partners. Um, as part of that acquisition, KPS Capital Partners has requested that the, the Chapter 100 bonds that we approved and issued earlier this year be reassigned to, to them um, as they take over the Briggs and Stratton operations. Um, they have prepared and submitted the draft documents that are all required for that um, that you should have had in your packets. Do you have any questions of the, nothing about the bonds will change other than who they're assigned to, so. I'll make a motion to move this to the October 19th voting session. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item eight. Action required items. AA bill number 8261. The city council will take action on an ordinance authorizing submission of a MoDOT cost share grant application for a portion of Highway 67 I 57 project. Motion for first reading bill number 8261. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance of the City of Popper Brook, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to execute a cost share grant application with the Missouri Department of Transportation relative to the U.S. Highway 67 I-57 project. Motion for second reading of Bill 8261. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance of the City of Papa Bluff, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to execute a cost share grant application with the Missouri Department of Transportation relative to the U.S. Highway 67 I-57 project. Motion for adoption. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Councilman Nagaris? Yes. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilwoman Taylor? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Davis? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Passes. Bill number 8261 is adopted. Item BB, Bill number 8262. The City Council will take action on an ordinance accepting a bid for the sale of property located at the southwest corner of Ball Lane and Barron Road. Motion for first reading of Bill number 8262. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance accepting a bid for the sale of real estate located at the corner of Ball Lane and Barron Road and owned by the City of Popper Bluff. Motion for second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance accepting a bid for the sale of real estate located at the corner of Ball Lane and Barron Road and owned by the City of Popper Bluff. Motion for 
Motion for adoption of Bill 8262. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilman DeGarris? Yes. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilwoman Taylor? Yes. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Davis? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Bill number 8262 is adopted. Item CC, resolution number 1933. The city council will take action on a resolution calling for a public hearing to receive citizens input regarding the proposed annexation of 145 Midnight Lane, Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Motion for the reading of resolution number 1933. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. A resolution with respect to the annexation of a certain unincorporated area to the city of Poplar Bluff, Missouri, such property being located at 145 Midnight Lane in Butler County, Missouri, and owned by Rick and Mary Catherine Brittingham. Motion for adoption of resolution 1933. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilwoman Taylor? Yes. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Councilman DeGarris? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Davis? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Passes. Resolution number 1933 is adopted. Item, item DD, resolution number 1934. The city council will take action on a resolution regarding financing for the proposed police station building project. Motion for the reading of resolution number 1934. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor. A resolution of the City of Poplar Bluff, Missouri, accepting the report and presentation of Stiefel Financial Corporation relative to the proposed financing of the Poplar Bluff Police Station and authorizing Stiefel Financial Corporation to proceed subject to further council approval with the financing process as submitted. So can I, I just want to clarify what exactly we're, we're approving tonight. So what exactly you're, we're ask, I'm asking you to approve tonight through this is to allow Stiefel to proceed. You know, what they presented last week was, were estimates. When bids come back in, um, they would take those firm numbers then and bring back the final financing package. Um, so that's, tonight is just authorizing Stiefel to start the process when they get the firm numbers back and for me to work with through that process. So. Motion for adoption, resolution 1934. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilwoman Taylor? No. <clears throat> Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Councilman DeGarris? No. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Davis? Yes. Mayor Smith? No. Thank you. Resolution number 1934 is adopted. Okay, we don't have anything for close action. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn following the city manager's report. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wanted to remind everyone that Saturday is our annual Buff Up the Bluff Day. Um, we'll start at 8 and go till about 3. Uh, the, uh, the leaf disposal site, which is southeast of Twin Towers, 
on County Road 604 at the end of F Street. Uh, proof of city residency is required. Some of the materials that are will be accepted, bulk metal items such as refrigerators, freezers, and air conditioning, air conditioner units, they must have their compressors removed. Um, we cannot accept asphalt shingles. Uh, we can't accept paint. We can't accept empty paint cans. Of course, furniture, carpeting, things like that we can accept. Limbs and brush, there's a, there'll be a section out there for that kind of stuff. Tires, we will accept tires. The Ozark Foothills Recycling Center will be there collecting tires. Uh, $3, there is a $3 fee per, for each tire and they have to be off the rim. We also will be accepting leaves that day as well. Um, if you are a senior citizen age 65 and older and a city resident, you can call City Hall um, Tuesday through Thursday from 9 to noon and then 1 to 4 uh, to be put on the list to have pickup, curbside pickup. That phone number is 573-686-8622. Um, we do ask that uh, we won't be picking up limbs and leaves during that curbside pickup. I know we had a volunteer in from RSVP this morning answering the phone and she had several calls so if you are 65 and older and need to take advantage of that program you can call in the next over the next three days. Um, if anybody would like to volunteer I know Mr. DeGarris he comes and helps us and Shane's come out before and so anybody else that would like just uh, in contact City Hall and we can help you arrange for that volunteer uh, opportunity. The, uh, the other thing is I just wanted to mention and remind everybody that the street department has started work repairing a storm drain at the intersection of second and relief. That intersection is closed starting this morning. I went down there and looked and they've got about a six foot hole dug across that whole intersection and with the road blocked off. Uh, they expect to possibly have one lane open by the end of this week, but more than likely it's going to be closed for about two weeks as they repair that storm drain. They've, it was actually starting to settle and fall in, and uh, so they're working hard out there to get that fixed and repaired. And that, Mayor, is all I have. Okay. If there be no other business, we stand adjourned.